Okay, so let me introduce myself first as being the guest here. So my name is Boyan Razovac. I'm responsible for research and development department at Entity Data Romania. Uh, basically, if you go to the next slide, uh, my company is a partner with Red Hat and uh, we are belonging to Entity Group. Entity Group is one of the largest uh, service and IT providing company from Japan. It's a global corporate and basically companies, uh, let's say uh, a sub company from the group from where I coming is Entity Data. So basically at Entity Data, we are focused mainly to service providing and uh, some of our uh, key focus areas are actually the automotive, uh, what we are going to cover today as well. Uh, AI, blockchain, cybersecurity, uh, uh, data and intelligence and uh, basically uh, other emerging technologies that can generate a big technical footprint uh, at today's market. So Ranki, back to you. Yep. So uh, well, uh, we've been partnering uh, with NTT as a system integrator over the past 18 months and uh, specifically in the newer areas which Red Hat has come into, uh, uh, that would be the edge and uh, OpenShift and Kubernetes being rapidly adopted into these spaces. Uh, NTT, uh, we, we find a perfect partner in NTT where there are lots of industrial edge cases and the automotive use cases, uh, which can be hosted on uh, Red Hat OpenShift. Uh, container platform and uh, uh, it being a true hybrid solution and uh, it being uh, uh, it uh, I mean taking your uh, taking your workloads to a multi cloud and also the hybrid cloud way uh, uh, is the way to go forward and uh, over the past uh, 18 months we've been working with various uh, projects which were uh, traditionally written for the embedded side uh, to be onboarded onto uh, the IT side, uh, as uh, most of the previous speakers were speaking about uh, how to integrate uh, developers at uh, uh, an, an uh, a car or, a, or automotive OEM onto Red Hat platform. So uh, we kind of use various uh, accelerators in order to adopt these uh, cloud and these practices, uh, 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 these solutions onto uh, the OpenShift cloud. So uh, one of the ways in which we uh, started integrating is uh, we have these validated patterns uh, because there are lots of uh, ways in which Red Hat has built expertise over the past one decade about Linux containers, uh, DevOps practices, how to how to write enterprise solutions uh, on an enterprise grade uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, distribution like uh, OpenShift Container Platform. There, there were many uh, aspects of various industry verticals which needed to be adopted. Uh, uh, adopted in an opinionated way in terms of what would be the right way of getting these solutions on top of OpenShift container platforms. Uh, so uh, uh, working with the various engineering and the field solution architects, they came up, they, they, they came out with various validated patterns in which uh, you can uh, you can use the uh, open source software which is built into these validated patterns. Uh, as uh, as uh, code, uh, like uh, in the words of Linus Torvalds, it's more of uh, talk, is, talk is cheap, show me the code. And many developers wanted to look at how to integrate their solutions and how to integrate their uh, edge solutions on OpenShift and uh, 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 in general in the Kubernetes platform. And many of the developers are eager to get their workloads, uh, predominantly which were in the automotive and the industrial use cases to use a modern distributed software like Kubernetes uh, in their production environments. So these validated patterns and uh, the accelerators which uh, power these uh, validated patterns could be one of the first steps uh, in which both the partner uh, developers and the customer developers can start accelerating, uh, can start adopting their uh, uh, code uh, to be uh, uh, to be from staging to uh, production environments pretty soon. And onboarding developers is easy uh, with these validated architectures. Uh, and onboarding uh, projects uh, and getting your projects uh, uh, two products uh, is uh, also uh, is very helpful with these. And uh, uh, all the software which we are talking about, like for example, here the accelerator which we used for this particular project was the Red Hat Bobby Carts. Uh, so uh, this is a vehicle uh, accelerator. 
accelerator. It's a, a vehicle simulator in which uh, there are various Red Hat products, not just the Linux containers, uh, also various Red Hat uh, runtimes, various uh, uh, various uh, Kubernetes operators, which are used to get uh, to get your solutions to uh, to staging and production. So uh, it's beyond just the uh, just the vehicle workload. It's also uh, how how are you going to take it to production across multiple clouds? So your 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 customers could be using AWS, they could be using uh, uh, the Google Cloud, or they could be using uh, Azure, uh, or they could be having their own private data centers. Uh, so getting these applications and processing these workloads at any uh, at any of these endpoints, uh, uh, these these accelerators make it possible. And also another thing is uh, we believe in doing. Uh, uh, do, doing things in the open. All our, uh, all the source code of this is available on GitHub, and uh, and on most of these are reproducible to handle most of the uh, uh, automotive and the industrial use cases. And we are also a part of various uh, collaboration, like uh, uh, Elisa is one of the uh, one of the foundations where we uh, actively participate. And we also collaborate with many uh, customers and partners, like in this case, uh, NTT Data is helping us on both their automotive expertise and their work automotive work loads on the OpenShift container platform. Uh, so this is one of the uh, one of the ways in which we use Bobby Car to accelerate uh, an entity in car solution uh, uh, for uh, <clears throat> human driving uh, human driver per perception platform and uh, one of the gateways which it uses called the multi sensory analytics platform gateway onto OpenShift. Uh, all the code uh, what we're seeing here is 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 workable and uh, uh, the integration platforms all of these. Source code is available on GitHub. We'll we'll share the links later. Uh, so uh, Bobby Car uh, itself is an accelerator, and uh, uh, we, we we use this because uh, you once you are adopting uh, enterprise distribution like Kubernetes, uh, 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 like OpenShift, uh, you are trying to integrate various Red Hat components, not just the operating system. Uh, you have uh, messaging queues, you have time series databases, uh, you have the authentication mechanism. Again, uh, you need to build your AI uh, AI ML uh, uh, pipe planes on top of your uh, on top of uh, your existing cloud and platform solutions so uh, what bobby card did is was it was an opinionated architecture of how how these uh, uh, in car solutions can be onboarded and what are the uh, what are the various software components you would need from the vast uh, cloud native compute foundations landscape uh, because there are quite a few uh, there are quite a few softwares which you need to choose uh, so what uh, bobby car does is it accelerates the process of uh, uh, you focusing on your own automotive code and uh, uh, Red Hat taking the workload and uh, distributing it across multiple clouds. Uh, we also use uh, various uh, uh, various operators uh, from the Open Data Hub and uh, and various uh, Kubernetes operators in order to facilitate or onboarding of this process. Uh, so I will stop over here and go to the next slide. Uh, Boyan, over to you. Okay, thank you, Ranki. Uh, so. During the following slides, I will try to explain this concept of human driving perception, why we are doing it, what actually we are doing, and why we think it is important. Uh, basically, if we take a look at connected vehicles market trends, uh, which was published by Gartner for the last year, uh, we can see that uh, a lot of topics around the metaverse and human-centric design has been raised nowadays. So autonomous vehicles market is a little bit stalling. This is something that uh, many other analysts has also reported. And according to that, we need to find a new way how to approach the clients. And one of the most important parts is definitely to understand the client's needs and to understand them in real time while the driver and passengers are inside of vehicles. Uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, basically uh, not only from the trends on the market, but also the regulations that we've seen uh, have been issued by European Union, but also by the US Senate, they're all requesting to have this kind of uh, mandatory safety features which needs to be implemented and which needs to be supported by the vehicles. So if you take a look at the list of such features, you will see that basically uh, different solutions which are supporting for a driver to prevent from accidents or at least to recognize early signs of possible accident and to try to improve the behavior of vehicle which will be correlated with the perception of humans, this is something that definitely we want to have. 
basically, at our next slide, uh, this is something uh, where we want to show exactly the concept. So, Ramki, if you can just uh, uh, move to the next slide. And uh, this is exactly the concept of human-centered approach that we are proposing here. Uh, what we want to do, we want basically to give more feedback from the client. So we know the famous ASIL formula, exposure, controllability, and severity. So these are three main factors that we are calculating today uh, to understand the ASIL level of certain modules, which are developed according to functional safety regulation. But what is missing here, it's human sentiment and perception of certain features. You can imagine a situation that uh, uh, emergency braking will do its job. So the vehicle will break on time, but how smooth it will be? Will it stress uh, people inside of a vehicle? Uh, how it will uh, cope with their emotions and the level of stress? This is something that, uh, unfortunately, at this moment, we do not have many possibilities to understand. Also, uh, lane assistance warning and similar uh, operations and similar features by the vehicle. Uh, we can just measure uh, the behavior of a vehicle, but we cannot measure the human feedback for that. And this is very important because at the end of the drive, at the end of the test drive, you can ask people to fill the questionnaire, but in most cases, it will not represent uh, the exact moment in time when certain maneuver happened and when the corrective operation needs to be taken. If you go around it to the next slide, this is exactly uh, the solution that we are proposing. We are taking several different parameters all together and we are applying it to cohort of vehicles, meaning that we want to understand the signals coming from the CAN bus. We want to understand the human behavior and uh, facial recognition uh, to understand the emotional level. We want to classify the objects in front of the vehicle. We want to know the exact context in terms of weather and in terms of the road uh, uh, through real-time navigation to understand exactly what is happening and why this situation happened that basically uh, uh, produced certain behavior from uh, a driver or other passengers. And this is exactly, if you go to the next slide, uh, shown in this short sequence, how we are collecting this data and how we are trying to understand the vehicle to collision risk, which is happening, for instance, during this specific maneuver. I must mention here, and I would like to thank to AVL uh, company, which is also one of our partners and which uh, supported us for collecting this data uh, during the uh, large data collection and the large experiment that we uh, did in the previous period. So if we put this all together and if we uh, put it in the context of uh, OpenShift and uh, Red Hat solutions, we can apply it to the large cohort of vehicles. And this is exactly what we uh, try to achieve through this concept. Ranki, if you go to the next slide, please. Uh, uh, basically, uh, the whole solution is very probabilistic and we are trying to understand Basically, our machine learning model has been trained to understand different signals and their change in time. So just from these signals, you cannot understand if you take one signal outside of other, uh, you cannot understand the exact situation and you cannot predict a certain maneuver or event. But if you put them all together and if you train the model in a way that uh, by uh, monitoring, in our case, it's around 14 signals, at the same time, what is their distribution through time? Uh, we can exactly recognize the patterns that in the next 500 milliseconds to one second, a certain situation, uh, a certain maneuver will happen during the drive, which will give us the possibility to check what the driver is doing. And if necessary, we can do additional corrective operation uh, through the uh, monitoring of vehicle, but also we can understand how people in general behave in this situation. This is very important because not only to do corrective operations which are correlated with human perception, we can also do the benchmarking of certain features. And this is what we are trying to achieve. Uh, so as our future cases, if you go rank to the next slide, please, uh, uh, this is uh, the goal. And this is something that we are achieving uh, all together with our colleagues from Redhead. We are trying to 
uh, applied to a large number of vehicles, so not only to monitor one vehicle, but to apply uh, the uh, uh, joint understanding, the federated learning, which will help us to improve the general model. And of course, it will keep, keep safety and security of the information exchange between uh, a vehicle and between the uh, exact uh, uh, device, which is in vehicle collecting information in real time and the global knowledge which is stored on the cloud. And this is something that we believe could help to prevent even the hazards and uh, uh, accidents in future, because we will uh, try to understand, we will try to put the human in the center of happenings, in the center of drive. And that way we will try to make much better interaction between a machine, which is in this case, of course, vehicle, and the human who is driving or being driven in autonomous vehicle. That would be all. Ranki, back to you. Yep. Uh, and, and if you're a Hat customer or a, uh, or a partner or an OEM, uh, uh, we are happy to demo uh, d demo uh, the human driver perception platform RTU also. Yeah. So uh, it is. Uh, it has been hosted uh, on the uh, GitHub project of uh, of the uh, Bobby Car project, and then uh, you could you could uh, if you already have an OpenShift cluster, you can just uh, run this project and get there uh, and and try it for yourself. Bojan, thank you so much um, for joining us today. And Ramakrishna, this this is great. I am um, almost afraid to buy a new car until all of this stuff is gets ready because um, uh, it's moving so fast. Uh, I just don't know um, what I should do next. Mm -hmm.